before we go ahead and use our new stretchy IK system I'm going to show you a handy little feature of blender armatures that can really help uh, make deformations look a lot nicer and um, once we go into our new IK system we'll have to do some corrections to keep that system working uh, with the new setup so I'll turn on our control layer here and I'll temporarily hide our new bones that we made for the IK and before we use them and let's go ahead and rotate the foot around so the foot is almost bending backwards like so and let's have a look at what the mesh looks like when we do that you'll notice that all our twist has been localized right at the joint which makes sense you have two bones twisting against each other and the bones just act like rigid bodies they can't twist across the length of them and um, that's pretty unfortunate because that's not really the way how twisting works when you twist your own foot around or your hand or so forth you'll notice that the uh, twist propagates along the length of that particular um, let's say your calf or your forearm and it doesn't just concentrate at the wrist or the ankle and uh, we need a way to get blender to mimic that and you can do that by using multiple bones across the leg with a whole bunch of constraints to keep them twisting at uh, slightly different degrees and, and, and skin those or you can use a handy feature of blender armatures known as b-bones now we've used b-bones as a display mode just so that we can um, scale some bones relative to others and still see where they are but um, there's another nice use for them and uh, really b-bones are not just a draw mode for the bones but they refer to how the bones work regardless of how they're drawn but you can only see that in the b-bone draw mode and that means um, b-bone actually means bezier bones or as I like to call them bendy bones um, if you look in the uh, properties of the bone itself you'll see that there's a number of segments if you increase that number of segments higher than one you can click on the arrows or type a number you'll see that the bone breaks into two here and as I go forward you'll see that the bone segments align themselves like they're part of a Bezier curve um, and that's indeed what what it's doing and um, that Bezier curve can twist and bend along the length of it however uh, in the case of the legs we don't want the bones to bend uh, all the time as you bend the joints we just want them to twist and the way we can tweak that is by adjusting these in and out numbers the in and out numbers um, really um, you can imagine that there's a bezier curve with a handle here and another handle right there and those in and outs are the length of those handles and if you set them to zero then you don't get any bending at that handle likewise for the out but the twisting will still work now right here you'll see that the twisting isn't happening at all because um, uh, the twisting happens relative to the child of that bone which in this case is this bone here calf rot dot l which is the child of the calf dot l um, and that twisting uh, won't work unless this one this bone rotates with the foot now before we do that um, you'll notice that purposefully I had set their rotations of these two bones to be different and different from the inclination of the calf itself. I don't want any default motion happening when I go from edit mode to pose mode so I want these bones to be completely in line with the calf by default and I'll just show you a very simple way of doing that uh, kind of a trick actually. What I'll do is I'll click the cursor to this joint here and snap my cursor to that selection like so then I'll click this joint here and I'll hit the dot key on my keypad on my keyboard sorry so that I go into the cursor pivot mode or I can just select it from this menu over here to pivot around the 3D cursor and then I'll simply scale this point down like so and don't worry about what I did because I'm going to snap it back to its original location in a moment and then I'll snap the cursor to its new position 
and then I'll hit Control Z to undo undo what I did just did. But the cursor is now in that alignment, and so I can simply s select the end of these two bones and snap them to the cursor, and now I have perfect alignment with the calf. So I'll get out of edit mode. That didn't change anything so far, but now I'll add a constraint to this child so it spins around with the foot. So select the target and then select the bone you want to add the constraint to with shift key depressed and then do control alt C and we'll add a copy rotation. And you can already see even though the bones are kind of in the way, and I'll change the layer so you can see that. There you go. You can see that the twisting is now propagating along the length of the calf which is what we want. I'll turn back that layer on and we'll do the same thing for the um, thigh bone. And In the case of the thigh, so if I left in and out at 1 and increase the segments, oh wait, wrong bone. <laughs> Sorry about that. You have to actually select the bone. Okay, there we go. If I increase the number of segments, you'll see that it bends, which is not what we want. But I'll just take our in and out to zero. And now we don't have any bending along the length of that. And um, we can have uh, better behavior, as we'll see shortly.